So what makes your heart happy that you sing? As you think about all the things that happen in life that bring you joy, I know for myself, recently, I received so much joy at a memorial service. I called it a homegoing service. It was the homegoing service of our own beloved Chrissy Sherwood. And although my heart was heavy during that time, the choir during that service blessed my heart, and I just rejoiced because of that. The eulogy given by Chris's fiance, Michelle, Deacon Michelle, blessed my heart tremendously, and I had so much joy. Reverend Deb got up and she yes, gave yes, a yes, poignant yes, reflection yes, about yes, the three songs yes, that reflected Chrissy's life and that Chrissy was going to live her life her way. Yes. That blessed my heart. The crowd that gathered, which is more than what we've been getting on, getting on a Sunday morning, by the way, but the crowd that gathered that evening and the testimonies that came forth blessed my heart and gave me so much joy. We had a not only a reception afterwards, but a reception before the service. And to see people who were coming in, who dropped things, changed their schedules, some who weren't feeling well, some who had just got finished having medical treatments, yeah. but came in anyway, yeah. To bless someone else. And to see that happen gave my heart joy. There was so much that happened during that one particular service. I was sharing with Rev Dev, I think there were five sermons that I could pick from that. But there's one, one thing that really brought me so much joy that I am selecting to preach upon this morning. And it was the actions of a group of individuals who, when they heard that one of their own had died, changed their schedules, things that were planned, and said, we are going to be there. And that group of individuals is you. MCC Detroit. How you loved on Michelle and, Mich and Chrissy's loved ones who came truly blessed my heart. And it just moved me so much. I wrote a song about it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now. But truly, I just really wanted to say that the love and concern and care that you all showed during that particular time you show that truly you have been transformed by the love of Christ. You had a true witness of Christ's love in your own life to others. I invite you now to bow your hearts with me. Thank you, gracious God, for the ways in which our family, both by blood and by chosen, can be there for us in times of need. And even though we can fight like cats and dogs, like brothers and sisters often do, God, I'm grateful that you help us to look beyond arguments and to see what we have in common as opposed to our differences. Thank you and praise you for the witness of your love and your life within ours. In your blessed name, Christ, we pray. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. That was from the gospel that John had wrote, and it really, really puts into perspective the ways we should be in this world and how we should react towards one another. Because as we go through life, 
and we claim the banner of Jesus Christ over our lives, we are telling other people that we are representatives, representatives of the living, resurrected Christ in our lives. Yes. How sad it can be at times when we allow disagreements and arguments and sometimes misunderstandings of who we are to blind us. That the bond that was once there is no longer there because we can't see that person anymore. All we can see is the grievance that is before us. And in that moment, that is the only thing that matters, is the grievance. But as we just read and just heard, that love can be your choice, because the word was if, if you choose. Let me read that one more time. By this, everyone knows that you are my disciples if you love one another. In other words, we have the capability of withholding that love and that forgiveness and that acceptance from one another. And it's not until we have a heart transplant by the Holy Spirit where we can have a better, better blood flowing through our veins, if you will, and a better vision of the person, of the people who are before us. One of my favorite passages was read today, and that was the account of Peter in Acts chapter 10 and verse 11. We did chapter 11. We read chapter 11. But I want to go back to chapter 10. And this is a passage that I use when I'm speaking to Christians who have a hard time seeing the humanity of those who identify as LGBT. Because again, they get so clouded and they can't see the person in front of them because of what they believe in their own minds. That the witness of the person in front of them, they're not able to see and thus they discount. <laughs> the story was this, that in Acts chapter 10, it began with a Gentile by the name of Cornelius. Cornelius was uh, a military person, much beloved, very revered by the people in, in his town. He was a God-fearing person. He was a person who people in that city, who were Jews, would even look towards as someone who is an example of who, whose heart had been transplanted by the resurrected Christ. But at this point, Cornelius had not heard the complete story of who Jesus Christ was, and so he needed to receive that fuller knowledge. In comes Peter, super apostle Peter. The one who has been given the keys of heaven and earth and the keys to hell and so forth. The one who was called the rock amongst all the other disciples. He was dreaming and he had this vision from heaven of this sheep that came down full of animals that were unclean for the Jews to eat. And this vision happened three times. That number three is very significant because we know that when you hear things multiple times, the significance is very important. So this happens three times to, for Peter to get up, to kill, and to eat. And he has an argument with God, never God, never will I eat anything that is unclean. You know the word of God, don't you God? Better than I do. I will never uh, do anything that would break the, the uh, Torah or the whole Holy Scripture, the sacred text. But then he hears another voice. And it was the same voice of God that told him to get up to kill and to eat. Which is, do not call anything profane or unclean that I am saying is clean. The reason why that is so very important is because we might
might look at that story of the service and simply think this is about dietary rules, and it is not. It had everything to do with Cornelius and everyone else who was like Cornelius, the Gentiles, the people who were seen as the outsiders, those who were called the dogs of society. Those who were the, on the who were on the outside and the Jews were on the inside. But God was creating a brand new thing and was beginning with the rock pier. To get up and to go and to go speak to Cornelius. Cornelius had a vision to say, go sit for Peter. Peter came. And during that time, he then began to explain to Cornelius, well, you know, this is unusual for me. We Jews don't associate with folks like you. It's against our rules. But I've been hearing some things about you, Cornelius. I've been hearing about your witness and how you love, how you love Jesus Christ. So let me tell you the full and complete story of Jesus and how he died and how he, I ran to the tomb and I saw the tomb empty and then turned around and saw my friend offering me his love. This Jesus who you, who you worship is indeed alive again. He is resurrected and in his life is our life. And as he began to tell the story to Cornelius, something very unusual happened to Cornelius in his household. As they used to say, the Holy Ghost fell. <laughs> the Holy Spirit fell upon that house. And as scripture writes, uh, uh, says in um, Acts 10, they all began to speak in other languages. In other words, speak in tongues. And that was the certification by God that I am indeed choosing the ones that you call unclean, the ones you call impure, that they are indeed part of my family. These two here are my children. So let me now flip the story and tell it in a different way. You see, there, were, there was once a Christian named Chrissy. <laughs> and Chrissy had done great things in the name of Jesus Christ. And Chrissy had served her church faithfully right. and her community faithfully. Yes, yes, yes. And then one day, a super Christian by the name of Billy Graham came along. <laughs> and Billy Graham was told, by the Spirit of God, that all of these people that you see before you, those who you consider to be the outsiders, I want you to go and I want you to speak to them. Never, my God, never would I go and speak to somebody who the church has said is unclean, someone the church has said is unworthy. Never would I go and speak to someone such as them who has an alternative lifestyle. And then he heard the voice of the Holy Spirit to say, Billy, never call anyone, any person, unclean or unworthy who I'm saying is a child of God. Now get up and go, and you find this Chrissy, and you speak to Chrissy. So he goes and he finds Chrissy, the Christian Chrissy, or Chrissy and begins to tell Chrissy about all the wonderful things that she was unaware of. Begins to teach her from the word of God that she is beloved, that she is welcome, that God made no mistake. In fact, she indeed is living in spirit and in truth by living in her God-given identity. And for her to be strong and courageous and in the power of God's might. Because of God indeed loves her and accepts her completely and fully as she is. That would be the significance of Peter and Cornelius in today's vernacular. 
And for some of us, as we hear that story, we can't even conceive someone like a Billy Graham reaching out to someone like a Chrissy Sherwater. But you see, the stories are very similar. Because it is through the Word of God that tells each and every one of us, do you consider anyone unworthy? Do you consider anyone less than? Is someone outside of your tribe? And if so, maybe you need a heart transplant. Yeah. And maybe you are the one who needs to have that walk to the city and you come across the resurrected Christ and to have your whole mind changed because of the resurrected Christ in your life. You see, each and every one of us here at MCC Detroit, what you did that night during Chrissy's memorial, there were some members of the transgender community who had not come into a church right. before. Right. Yes. I won't say ever, but not in their authentic selves. That was the first time that they had entered into this space that had been normally judgmental towards them, that would condemn them, that would even be spiritually violent towards them. But it was that night that the doors were open and the welcome mat was Amen. laid out Amen. and to say, come on in. Amen. It was that night because of the wisdom of Deacon Michelle, the Holy Spirit spoke to her and then spoke to me and said, allow Chrissy's family to refer to her as him. Because I had no idea. There were some members of Chrissy's family and friends who came that night expecting to see Craig. All right. Had no idea Craig was Chrissy. Right. And yet, nonetheless, their hearts were changed due to your witness right. of allowing grace and space right. to yes. be and they got to see something new yes. and something different. Right. As people gather down in Connections Cafe, people of differences speaking towards one another. Mm -hmm. And the witness that was simply there based upon you, because you showed up, the church was full, it was a great witness that someone who has transitioned here at this church, we're going to honor them with dignity. Absolutely. It's not going to be a half memorial service. It's going to be full and complete yeah. and given all the dignity yeah. that a child of God deserves. Amen. Amen. So many of us within the LGBT community couldn't even conceive of that happening. And so many within the trans community who came in that night got to see a different view of how a church can be loving and accepting and open in a way that they couldn't even think of before. So it wasn't just because of the pastors. It just wasn't because of the music minister. That was because of all of you and all of the witness that you gave to other people. So, since we can do that on that day, can't we do it every other day? Amen. Come on. Amen. Can't we be the type of community that welcomes all individuals, and even though those who we call brother and sister, but maybe there's been a disagreement, can we look beyond that and say, you know what, no longer do I see the grievance I have towards you. I see the Christ yes. within you. Yes. Amen. You are my brother. You are my sister. Yes. And I love you immensely. Yes. I love you in the same way that Christ loves me. Yes. And has been accepting towards me. Just don't take my word for it. The very next day, 
after Christmas Memorial, I received an email from one of you, a member of MCC Detroit. And I have to admit, it, this email came from an individual who I didn't expect this email to come from. But it showed how much your witness even ministered to this one individual. This individual writes, tell the world, last night I witnessed what the current world, world should be like. I was at a memorial service celebrating a person's life that touched very dissimilar worlds in a place that celebrated us all. People attending included many different personalities, diverse lives, and backgrounds. The life celebrated was for a trans person attended by straight people, lesbian, gay males, bisexual, and trans people, including parents who were straight and parents who were LGBT. People who were older, people who were younger, various religious backgrounds, people with differing financial lifestyles and political beliefs, and people from various ethnic backgrounds, including African Americans, Asian Americans, Caucasian, and Latin American upbringing. This audience represented today's world, all very different, yet all celebrating a person's life who was given. This was more important than to celebrate our individualism. I witnessed at this service and the reception afterwards that getting along together is certainly more important than challenging each other's beliefs. <laughs> and then this, this, the last is in bold. Tell the world that you have found a place that represents what the world should be like. Tell the world about MCC Detroit. Inspire, influence, and include. Because of what you've done for me. 
and I will go speak to that individual. And I will share your love, and I will share your light, and I will open my heart even greater so your love and light can influence them. This is what makes me happy. And this is what makes me sing. So this one brings me joy. In Christ's name, the risen Christ. Amen.